Nitrogen, a component of protein, is essential for all living things. It exists in the environment as a solid, as a gas, and as a liquid, changing forms as it moves through the nitrogen cycle. One of the forms it changes into is called nitrates. Some of the nitrates make their way into groundwater through rain cycles, usually at concentrations far below a level of concern for drinking water safety. This is because plants and trees are able to absorb a majority of the nitrates present in natural wooded areas. However, if there is excessive rainfall or over-irrigation, nitrates will be leached below the plant's root zone and may eventually reach groundwater. In 1962, the U.S. Public Health Service adopted drinking water standards and set the recommended limit for nitrates at 10 parts per million. The Environmental Protection Agency has since adopted the 10 parts per million standard as the maximum contaminant level for nitrates and one part per million for regulated public water systems. This drinking water standard was established to protect the health of infants and pregnant women who have been deemed susceptible to blue baby syndrome in which blood lacks the ability to carry sufficient oxygen to the individual body cells causing the veins and skin to appear blue. A potential cancer risk from nitrates in water and food has also been reported. A possibility exists that nitrates can react in the body to form nitrosamine, which is known to cause cancer. Some soils, such as the sandy soils of central Wisconsin, are especially susceptible to excessive concentrations of nitrates. In this central Wisconsin map, the red-orange areas represent high levels of contaminant susceptibility. Note that the Wysocki Central Sands Dairy area west of the Petenwell flowage is found to be high in nitrates at 77 parts per million. Our concern for our Central Sands area is that in areas of intense farming, such as CAFOs or concentrated animal feeding operations, the nitrate concentration may approach or exceed the EPA drinking water limit of 10 parts per million. Indeed, as this town of Saratoga example shows, here is a 140-acre pine woods area at the northeast corner of Highway 13 and Tower Road, as it appeared in 2013. This is just across Highway 13 from Wysocki's proposed Golden Sands CAFO primary building location. A nitrate monitoring well across from this field on Tower Road showed a nitrate level of just 2.4 parts per million when these pines were present in 2013. Here's the same 140 acres, now devoid of trees. This acreage was subsequently planted with crops of corn in 2014 and 2015 and soybeans in 2016. Nitrate readings since the deforestation of this acreage show an increase from 2.4 parts per million to 12.6 parts per million in just three years. How high will the readings be in another three years? Sherry lives in the midst of the Central Sands Dairy in Armenia. Over the few years that this Wysocki CAFO has operated, Nitrate levels in her groundwater have risen to more than 37.1 parts per million. As Sherry unwittingly continued to use her well water, her health deteriorated. Nausea and being dizzy all the time. One little thing, if I would bend down for a bed at work, you, you feel like you're going to fall out. And then I finally did fall out. Blood pressure skyrocketed. That was weird. Okay. That was strange as a nurse. If I'm dehydrated, my blood pressure is way up into the 170s. I normally run, run 110 or less. I've always been great. I'm not on any medication at all. Knock on wood. Because when I look back, I was dizzy for a long, for, for a few years. No. So I was having a lot of problems, nonstop diarrhea. I'd eat something. Within five minutes, it's going through my system. And it's out. And I'm sick. Now I'm afraid to eat. Now I can't leave the house because where are you going to go? You know, I mean, it's embarrassing. Um, I was trying to keep stuff down. I'm getting di dehydrated. I can't have no energy. I can't get out of bed. I'm having racing heart rate um, and because I can feel it. Were you still able to work? Well, I had to. I had to.
had two. When Sherry's incision from her operation would not heal, she learned about the possibility of nitrates and other contaminants in her water. Did you put hydrogen peroxide on it then? Yeah, and clean it with soap and water, and they weren't healing. And now I'm getting drainage. Now I'm putting bandages on them. And um, I was concerned. I'm ready to blame the hospital, thinking they didn't follow protocol. Well, guess what? So all of a sudden it dawns on me, you know, because I'm not feeling well. I'm still drinking the water. I'm still, you know, um, you think you're thinking correct, but you're not. And I woke up one morning and went, wait a minute, Sherry, you're a nurse. You take care of patients. You use ster normal saline or sterile water to do a lot of wound care. Think about that. And 4th of July, so I had those incisions infected that long. 4th of July of this year was when I started distilling the water and I used distilled water with cotton balls a week. A week's time it cleared up. Time it cleared up. Even though she stopped using her untreated well water for doing dishes, washing clothes, and bathing, life has not been easy for Sherry. Ashley, it was uh, Glenn, the Department of Agriculture, and he said, um, you're at a fork in the road. You can call in and get a new well, or you can st start cl just cleaning up and, he, and figure it out. And he said, Sherry, what I would do, finally somebody said what I would do is I'd get a countertop distiller, start functioning again, and then go from there and make your decisions. And I had no clue what cleaning up meant. Well, this with the felt, but it, see it has a carbon filter, which is key. I have to have that because of the pesticides. So, um, they, um, this brand ran, you know, 200, 200 bucks. Okay. So I'll show you the filter. These filters are supposed to run 40 gallons, but the pollution's so bad here that um, I hit like 36 gallons and I felt, all of a sudden I smelled something funny. I went, oh. My whole life has been like this. I'm 55. Now I gotta change every tiny habit of my life. You can't do it. I'm cooking and I'm like this. You were used to running to the sink, washing your hands, and I'm going, I, I can't do this anymore. Every single thing has changed. It's little things, and these are tiny things that we take for granted. I mean, I can confidently flush my toilet and feel good about it, because I'm not using clean water to do that. <laughs> you don't cook with it, don't shower with it. And, and then I, I got well enough to clean, because I got two baths, and I used to have a bunch of visitors come up all the time. Nobody comes at all anymore, nobody, um, and that's okay. Well, I w I'm single, I don't have kids. Do this with the family and little ones running around turning on the sink, right? Brushing their teeth and the, or bathing. Um, I have to take a bath, I can show you my bath setup. I have to heat a big pot of water, watch the temperature, and then I can bathe the old fashioned way. Or as nursing, you got a uh, bath in a bag. You can't wash your hands in the sink, okay? So you buy your Germex. You can't rinse your pans. You can rinse your pans and stuff when you're cooking, but you better have gloves on. Okay, well, if you use the sink. Every single aspect of your life takes longer. And you have to think about what you're doing. My plan was to be here, you know, and I purposely picked a mobile home for less taxes. Everything I did, I calculated. To have a cheaper lifestyle, I didn't need, I didn't want, all the material things I wanted, the outdoor activity. That was sort of my dream, but. Does it make you angry that you have to live life the way you do, going through this elaborate process to purify your water? Well, I would say no. Um, think about it. I, w I, I, I was gifted the ability to find out that it was bad. I had no clue. I was up on the walking machine so excited and I'm doing up to five miles, I'm starting to run. All of a sudden I get hit with, with not feeling well so now you're not doing that. And there was, you know, tubes left in me from that. And then pretty soon I'm down to maybe I can make a mile, right? And I'm doing all the right things. And I'm taking care of veterans, which I love. I'm a nurse 
you know, I'm doing all the right things. So what I was gifted, because who would know? I completely, when I got the water results, I was floored. Completely floored. I, I was like, there is just no way there has to be a mistake. This water is, it looks great. Sherry is a victim of rising nitrate levels and other contaminants in her groundwater. Now multiply her experience by more than 5,000 residential wells within five miles of the proposed Waisaki Golden Sands CAFO. That's nearly one home for every cow that produces a stream of manure throughout each day, 365 days a year. The resulting 55 million gallons of liquid manure and 50 million pounds of solid manure have to go somewhere. When spread or sprayed on the 4,600 acres that Waisaki plans to clear cut and then treat with an additional 1.5 million pounds of nitrogen, the result cannot be good for the groundwater that thousands of people rely on in the townships of Saratoga and Rome. This nitrate video addresses only one of our concerns about the proposed Waisaki Golden Sands CAFO. There are many more, not the least of which is Waisaki's own position of limited responsibility for their actions. Which state? The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is authorized to impose the nutrient management standards contained in Wisconsin Administrative Code, Chapter NR243, to protect groundwater and not more. In effect, this statement shows that the Waisaki Company is laughing at the DNR's failure to use their authority to fully enforce existing groundwater protection for the residents of Wisconsin. We have no doubt that the Waisaki Company intends to take full advantage of this situation just as it has done at the Central Sands CAFO. And, as the Golden Sands CAFO will be built using the same blueprint as the Central Sands CAFO, we can expect the outcome will be the same. Rising nitrates and other contaminants in groundwater that could make household wells unusable. Trying to place a CAFO in the midst of the two residential communities of Saratoga and Rome shows a tremendous lack of respect for your neighbors. Is it any wonder why we want to stop the Waisaki Golden Sands Dairy CAFO?